this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here's one I know a lot of you have been waiting for. This is the Asus Tai Chi Windows 8 Notebook Convertible, 2.75 pounds or so, quite light, 11.6 inch for the Tai Chi 21. There's also a Tai Chi 31, and that one's a 13.3 inch, but what's so interesting about this? 1080p display in here, matte display, not a touch screen, but when you close it, it automatically switches to the outside display. And there you have it in its Gorilla Glass Beauty. Also 1080p, also IPS. Works with 10 fingers of multi-touch and a digital pen. We're going to look at it now. So here it is, finally, the ASUS Tai Chi. Again, this is the Tai Chi 21, which in ASUS lingo means the 11.6 inch and the 31 model is the 13.3 inch. Obviously this guy is the more portable 11.6 inches and has been a popular size so far for convertible ultrabooks because it's not so burdensome to hold this in your hands. See right now we're on the standard Windows desktop in desktop mode. We press our little button right there. There's our live tile interface. Ten fingers of multi-touch. We have a 1080p IPS display here. Not the world's brightest though. Display brightness is 250 to 280 nits of brightness depending on whether you're looking at the internal or the external. But it's fine for indoor use. For those of you who are going to use this outdoors though, it's, this is not one of ASUS's crazy bright 600 nit displays here. Nonetheless, it's a beautiful display. Very good contrast. A gamma calibration a little strangely off at the factory. You can tweak that if you want, but overall good, nice, rich colors. A little on the warm side. Very pleasing to look at. Uh, right up there with the, the Sony Vio Duo 11 in terms of display quality and obviously resolution and size also are matching. Now if we look at it like this, it looks kind of like a normal notebook because it also is a normal notebook. It has a ASUS taper going on, uh, sort of like the Zenbook, Zenbook Prime series and the metal casing, but it doesn't get quite as skinny. That's because the lid itself has to be thicker because it's housing two displays. On the side here you can see this is our power button right here. It's a slider button. We have our micro HDMI, a USB 3.0 port, and that's our charging port right there. On the back, a fairly normal design for hinge. You can barely see these two little rubber stipples right here. That's because when you push the display all the way back, it will actually rest on this area when it's being used in standard laptop mode. And this side here, 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack, a USB 3.0 port. We have our mini VGA, which comes with a little dongle adapter, volume controls, and this is a slider lock here. You can lock this into normal laptop mode, or you can leave it in switchable mode, where when you close the lid, it's going to automatically switch to showing you a display right there. When the display is off, it just looks like a sheet of black glass. It looks like one of those Gorilla Glass clad HP Envy Spectres or the black version of the Acer Aspire S7 Ultrabook. On the bottom, usual ASUS looking Zenbook kind of thing. It's metal. You can see these are our vents right here. Stereo speakers. These are the grills on this side right there, on this side right there. Rubber feet. Lots of little teeny torque screws if you want to get inside. Not the most user upgradable thing. This is an Ultrabook after all. RAM is soldered on board on this, for example. Now, we're going to take a look inside. Now, inside here, again, looks a lot like Zenbook, Zenbook Prime kind of materials. This is metal. It gets nice and cold in the winter, folks. Uh, good quality, well put together, definite improvement in fit and finish here for ASUS. Uh, particularly speaking of that, it, it, ASUS is known for their backlight bleed with their IPS displays, and this has fairly minimal backlight bleed on the internal and external panels. In fact, there's just about no light bleed whatsoever on the external panel. Just a little, little bit on the bottom, but no worse than our Sony Vio Duo 11, and then that's a company that we hold the high standards there. Often you're, always, you're going to see a little bit of IPS backlight bleed, and that's where you can see lighter right around the edges if you're displaying a very dark background, particularly if you have the brightness cranked up and you're in a dark room, but I'm not going to be complaining about it here. And here we have our keyboard deck. This is all metal right here. Nice Zenbook Prime kind of design element. A lovely island style keyboard. Now this keyboard is small. It's actually quite easy to type on. Good tactile feel. Decent amount of key travel, especially for something that this, that's this small. Certainly better than the Vio Duo 11 with its pint-sized keyboard, thanks to the slider design. Not quite as good as the Dell XPS. 12's keyboard, but that's one of the best keyboards on the market. So I think that most people who spend a lot of time typing are going to enjoy this keyboard quite a lot. Got our little cluster of arrow keys here. You can see everything is a normal layout. Our FN row up top does double duty as usual with the multimedia and control keys. 
And that is not switchable in BIOS. It used to be with ASUS computers and many others. You could switch in BIOS so you didn't have to hit the FN key, say if you want to turn wireless on and off or change your keyboard brightness or your display brightness, you're going to have to use the FN key. Not the end of the world. Something real special right here is what they call the Tai Chi key, which is looks a little bit like a yin-yang symbol. And if you press that, it's going to bring up right here. So up here in the corner, these are the important guys, and you can actually use this either on the touch screen this application or right here, but right now we're in standard notebook mode, you can see that that's selected, and then if we select the next one over, we can put it to manually be on the back screen, which you can also do just by closing the notebook, but say you just want to use it with it upright like this, so you can kind of use it in presentation mode, that works. And then we have mirror mode, so whatever we're seeing here, we're going to see on the outside, useful for presentations, content sharing. Imagine if you're, you're playing a game and you want somebody to watch and see what you're doing. You can actually just do that. It's pretty cool. And the last one, on the far corner right there, actually gives you two different screens. So I was functioning like having dual monitors running independently. So I can be running an application here, say I'm, I'm surfing a, the web here and I've got a movie playing on the back that my kid can watch. Or if you're doing something business-wise, you can do a presentation. You can have PowerPoint running in presentation mode on the back while you're looking at your deck of presentation slides on the front. So, interesting, certainly, way to use a notebook computer with that possibility of content sharing there. And that's what the two displays gets you. So what do you get in the Tai Chi? Now we're talking about the Tai Chi 21 again, the 11.6 inch. And you can get that with either a Core i5 1.7 gigahertz or a Core i7 1.9 gigahertz ULV CPU, your typical Ultrabook CPU selections. The base model is the i5 with 128 gig SSD SATA 3 interface, and the higher end model is the i7 with 256 gig SSD, and both of them have 4 gigs of DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM. Now ours has a SanDisk 256 gig drive in here, and I know with the past Enbook Prime some of you have been bothered if you've got a SanDisk drive. This is a new redesigned drive, much faster, very good drive speeds on this, so absolutely no complaints with that. It looks like it's going to be a SanDisk all around this time for the drives that are used in here. So no complaints, very good transfer speeds according to our disk tests. Good stuff. As you saw, it has two USB 3.0 ports, really a good selection of ports for such a little machine. It has mini, the micro HDMI out and mini VGA. You get adapter actually to bring that up to full VGA in the box and you get your 3.5 millimeter combo jack. There is no SD card slot in the 11 inch model. There is one in the 13 inch model. As with past Zenbooks, ASUS includes this little ballistic nylon pouch here that holds two adapters. This is your VGA adapter, still wrapped in plastic, so that plugs into the mini VGA port. It gives you a standard VGA output for those of you who have legacy monitors and projectors. And you also get 10100 USB Ethernet right here. It plugs into your USB port, gives you RJ45 Ethernet included in the box. Power adapter is the usual mono block kind of wall work connector with lots of long skinny cord right here to plug into the wall. So it's pretty portable certainly compared to a lot of other adapters. And again typical of Zenbooks you also get the ballistic nylon carrying pouch with a nice soft micro suede interior so you've got something to carry your nice new expensive notebook around because these are expensive folks. You're spending about a hundred bucks extra to get that second 1080p display, which really actually isn't that bad a price if you find that an appealing feature to add only a hundred bucks on for that. But we're talking $12.99 for the Core i5 with 128 gig SSD and $15.99 for the Core i7 with 256 gig SSD. No matter which one you choose, you're going to get the internal 1080p display right here, matte anti-glare, just like we saw on the Zenbook Prime. Certainly graphic artists are going to appreciate that. The high resolution, the anti-glare finish on this, this still has pretty good viewing angles. Hard to beat, no reflections. Also easier on the eyes, even if you just spend a lot of time typing in an office where there's a lot of glary overhead lights. And the rear display is also IPS 1080p resolution. You've got a webcam with microphone right up here, 720p webcam up front. On the outside, you've got a 5 megapixel 1080p camera placed below the display or above the display, depending on how you rotate the bugger. One thing that will probably drive you crazy until you get used to it, if you ever do, is the fact that this is not a touch screen on the inside. Once you get used to touching the thing and given the Windows 8 interface right here, it comes with full Windows 8, by the way, uh, it's a little weird that you have to use the trackpad instead. Can't touch here, all you're going to get is fingerprints if you do. 
That said, this trackpad here, nice, oversized trackpad, something we've never been able to say about ASUS trackpads before. They, they used to be really designed just to torture you, in my opinion. This one works well. The gestures work fine. You can do the swiping in from the sides. You can do the two-finger multi-touch to scroll. All of that works just fine. How about performance? We'll take a look at our Windows Experience Index right here as we switch back to desktop mode. And I can tell you that on PC Mark 7 Benchmark, it scored a 49.52, which is quite good, and about what we would expect from a higher-end Core i7 ULV Ultrabook with an SSD drive. And here's our Windows Experience Index. On a scale of 0 to 9.9, we get 7.1 for the processor. 5.9 for the RAM, 5.6 for desktop graphics, 6.4 for gaming graphics and 3D graphics, and 8.1 for the primary hard disk. Now, despite the robust gaming score there, this is an Ultrabook with Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics only. No dedicated GPU here. You are not going to be playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 latest version at high frame rates and native resolution on this. Older games, casual games, games from the Windows Store, oh, they play just fine. World of Warcraft, yeah, at 1366 by 768 if you drop down the resolution, you can run that at about 50 frames per second or so. So, there you have it. Uh, Ultrabooks are just not serious gaming machines, but you, you can get away with some gaming on this, and certainly less demanding games like Left 4 Dead 2 play just fine on this. Since this is full Windows 8, you can install all of your Windows 7 applications, x86, exe apps, whatever you want to call them. For example, we have Photoshop installed on here. We're going to show you how that runs, because that's of interest certainly to your graphic designer types. And now we're in Adobe Photoshop CS664 bit. 1080p matte display, very nice for photo editing. Like I said, reasonable color accuracy. I would adjust the gamma if I were you, if I was a graphics professional. But other than that, works just fine. And we're going to import a 15 meg raw file here. And there we've got imported, took a little bit longer than say it would on a full Core i7 non-mobile CPU on your desktop, but hey, for an Ultrabook that wasn't bad at all. And we're going to apply a little camera adjustment for a Sony Alpha digital camera that we use and open up that image. It's an 18 megapixel image, so we're giving it a good challenge. And there's our image, and say we want to apply some filters to it and test this out a bit. We'll do an unsharp mask with the default values. Previews pretty quick. That was fast enough for me. And now we'll rotate the image. So certainly once you get the, Im the image imported, it works just fine. And again, a pleasure to work on that. And if, say, you want to use this on the outside display, let's just close this and see how it goes. So here it is, and now we can use the digital pen because uh, using your fingers with Photoshop isn't my idea of fun, so we can do things like... So we can do things like, say we want to undo that rotation. Works just fine. If you want to draw on this, yes you can do that. If you want to use the selection tool, for example, I just want to select the red chair right here. Easy peasy. One thing you're not going to get is pressure sensitivity. This is, comes with an Ntrig DuoSense 2 pen, which actually is a pretty good pen with 512 levels of pressure sensitivity, uh, but there is no WinTab driver right now for Ntrig. They're working on that, them and Adobe together, to get that to you. So if pressure sensitivity is particularly important here with Adobe Photoshop, keep that in mind. Now if you're using something like ArtRage Pro or 
Corel Painter 12, then you do get pressure sensitivity. It's, it's only a Photoshop that requires that wind tab driver. So here's a pen that you get in the box. Works with an included AAA battery. You've got two buttons here. You can program it. No eraser function. This is a metal back. Intrig says that people didn't really want the eraser function. I find that hard to believe, but you can assign it to the button on the barrel if you want. And this is a duo sense too, so this offers better pressure sensitivity, better tracking speed, all that neat stuff. And it's a Seuss branded, but we're going to show you the reference design that Intrig sent us. It's exactly the same pen. You can see here just a slightly different color. So it really doesn't matter which you use in this case. And while we're comparing pens up top here, here's the Sony pen. Notice how similar it is. They, they did a little more styling to the pen, but same Entrig digitizer on the Sony Vio Duo 11, same DuoSense 2 pen. So now we're in Art Rage Pro. We're going to open up a drawing that I was working on. So there, there it is. You can see this was done with a colored pencil tool. A whole lot of tools are available here, but this is not a review of Art Rage. This is really just to show you how well it works. And we're going to add some shading below the apple so you can see how responsive the pen is. And the pressure sensitivity. Say I want my shade darker right there. Accentuate the bottom of our apple a little bit. It's pretty good for natural drawing. I'm going at a pretty good clip right here, and it's having no problem keeping up. I, I actually find it quite pleasing to draw on this. And I'm not missing Wacom at all, and it's just as good as the Sony Vio Duo 11. And it actually runs a little bit quieter and cooler than the Vio Duo 11, which tends to get a little bit warmer when you use it in the closed position. That works just fine. So yes, you can do real digital art with this. Again, this is Art Rage Pro. You can use Corel Painter 12 or the tools of your choice. And pressure sensitivity, obviously there, as you saw, light line, dark thick line. Works great. And now for you note takers, we're in OneNote 2013 right here. And this has palm rejection, of course, and you got the little hover thing with going on with the pen. A little hard to see that teeny little dot, but there it is following me. And I can write quite quickly enough. No problem whatsoever. So note taking, definitely a go. 2.7 pounds, a little bit much to hold up on your arm forever, but if you put this down on the desk like you would a pad of paper, no problem whatsoever. And for those of you who don't lean very heavily with the hand, you can actually put it in single screen back mode right here and continue writing if you don't want to hold it up. Hinge is reasonably stiff, bounces a little bit, but I find if I curve one thumb, one finger back here, it works also like this if you want to do that too. And in addition to being able to use the Tai Chi button with a little yin yang symbol over here to switch between your displays and to do mirroring mode or to do two separate screen mode, there's an application that comes with called Screen Share, and you can drop movies on here, PDF files, and PowerPoint. Maintain your desktop right here, and you'll have it playing on the back. So we're going to test that with a movie trailer. You can hear the speaker level right now. Bring it up to 65%. Now it's there for a little bit. So you can see we have it playing in screen share. Let's turn it around and see what's going on at the back. And there's our movie playing full 1080p movie trailer, MPEG high profile, MPEG 4. So we can keep using the computer while we're entertaining somebody with a movie on the back. And while we're looking at the lid backside again, this is your control to go to the Windows home screen, disabled right now because we're in that presentation mode, and this is your 5 megapixel webcam up here. And now for a quick comparison, we have the Sony Vio Duo 11 right here and the ASUS Tai Chi 21 over here, both 11.6 inches, both convertible Windows 8 machines. In terms of form factor, not exactly. I mean, they have two different ways of working the, the convertibility here, but 11.6 inch 1080p IPS displays, that kind of thing. Core i5, Core i7 options, same storage options available. Sony's going to be about $100 cheaper. Again, you're paying for two displays here on the Tai Chi, but you can see how they work. Sony being a slider, the keyboard is shifted forward. There is no 
wrist rest deck over here. You get a bigger keyboard on this. They both have backlit keyboards, however. And when you close them up, Sony just slides down like that. And this guy, we switch to the outside display. About the same size as Sony is just a little bit thicker and a little bit bigger lengthwise over here, but fairly close in size. The Sony also weighs a couple of ounces more. So it really depends on what you need. If you like the idea of having dual displays in the matte interior and the functionality that's just like a notebook, then this is a good pick. If you want to have a touch screen available all the time, even when using the keyboard, then the Sony is a better pick. And now right here we have the Tai Chi and the Dell XPS 12 over here. Yet another way of doing things with the Dell XPS 12. 12 inch, obviously a little bit larger display, also 1080p, same Core i5, i7 option, and SSD storage options. But when you open it up, of course we go back to the Tai Chi. It's going to switch to interior display in a minute, just like that. And with the Dell, it uses this kind of swinging easel frame, which is pretty interesting. I worry about how robust it's going to be over time, but other than that, that's what the lid looks like. Nice carbon fiber. Flip it over, and there you have your notebook mode, complete with Gorilla Glass glare, as you can see, reflecting things. The glare is actually managed certainly better with this, with the interior matte display. Which leads to, well, who who is this product for, the Tai Chi? Obviously it's for folks who do a lot of work and can't stand glare and it's important for them to see the screen clearly. That would be your graphics professionals, especially with that 1080p display right there. It's also great for road warriors because at 2.7 pounds and 11.6 inches, highly portable, yet it has a great keyboard and actually a very good trackpad too. And then you can flip it to use it for tablet mode. So it's also good for graphic artists who depend on the pen. Just close it up and as you saw from our demo with the digital pen and doing some drawing and artwork and Photoshop work, you're good to go there as well. And lastly, there's that whole sharing and presentation mode thing. For those of you who are business folks and you want to run a PowerPoint presentation inside of here, have a display in presentation mode on the back, or toss a video out in the back side, entertain your family, you're trying to get work done, you want to let your kids play a learning game or show them a video, something like that, more possibilities right there. Certainly it's a premium product. You've got the metal casing, that whole Zenbook, Zenbook Prime kind of design. Good selection of ports, pretty nice. And so you can see what the keyboard backlighting looks like. There it is, illuminates around the edges. Pretty clear, pretty sharp, and you can adjust the levels of keyboard backlighting too. All the way down, and then all the way up. How about heat and noise? I have to say that among convertible ultrabooks, this guy has been one of the quietest and coolest I've used yet. Now, none of them get too hot. The Dell XPS 12 is actually one of the toastier ones and does a little bit more thermal throttling. But when playing movies, when streaming Netflix, even when doing some light gaming, I tell you, it just doesn't really get hot. You really have to be pushing it with games that are almost beyond its capability and using the GPU and the CPU on this to start to get it to be uncomfortable at certain places on the bottom to touch. Other than that, just nearly silent in productivity operation, even when playing videos, which is great, so you can hear those little stereo speakers with the Bang & Olufsen Ice Audio branded Wavesmax Audio on this. So all in all, it's a very capable Ultrabook. Certainly, even if you get the Core i5 instead of the Core i7, you're getting most of the speed right there, so you can drop down to the $12.99 price bracket as long as you're okay with the 128 gig SSD. Asus likes to partition their drives, really don't know why, so you get a C drive and a D drive pre-partitioned on there, and there's also a recovery partition on the drive, so expect to lose about 20 gigs or so of that storage to recovery and other partitions on the device. Battery life, mm, you know, Windows 8 convertibles so far, they have not had the best battery life, and nothing is different here. When you have an 11.6 inch form factor, there's just not room, much room for a battery. Asus says this is a six cell battery in here. They must be very small cells because I, it runs about four hours on a charge. That's about it. So you're not talking stupendous battery life here. And that's with one screen running, by the way. With two screens, you're certainly gonna be dropping down your battery life more. Happily, the charger is very portable. So that's the Asus Tai Chi 21, and definitely one of the more interesting convertible ultrabooks on the market, but there are several very good designs right now. Also a little bit more expensive than the others, but for those of you who covet the matte display inside and the 1080p display outside for drawing, finger, touch, all that kind of thing, well, it's certainly hard to beat. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review of the Asus Tai Chi, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.